Uh, right now, there are fresh calls for the euthanasia debate to be put back on the political agenda after the death of Wellington lawyer Lucretia Seals. A petition calling for a select committee inquiry on the right to die is expected to be presented in Parliament later this month. With me now, Prime Minister John Key. John, good morning. Morning, Paul. Um, where do you stand on euthanasia? Uh, personally, I've been um, reasonably supportive of it. So the last time it was debated in our Parliament, Peter Brown, uh, who was at that stage with New Zealand First, uh, put up a bill and I voted for it to go to the select committee. So that was the one that lost, it I think, just 50, lost, yeah, 58, 60 or 59, yeah, 60, yeah. Yeah. So obviously with this petition being presented before the end of this yeah. month, um, do you imagine that the best place for this to be handled is at select committee? It could be, but um, i make this sort of point. I, I don't think that, that, well, I can tell you now, the government won't put it on the agenda as a bill in its own right because it's a conscience issue. Always has been and, um, frankly, always will be. And I think you just won't get some, you know, some people who feel very strongly the other way to vote for that in any other way than with their conscience. So in terms of a select committee, the only point I would make there is that they could well um, consider it, and Justice and Electorate, for instance, could consider it. Um, they would need the support of um, the caucuses of different um, political parties, mm, mm. and some have varying different views. The only point would be is if they did go through that discussion and they had that inquiry, they could hear submissions. But where does well, that well, lead them, is, I suppose? Well, but that's surely valuable, isn't it? I and mean, this, is this is the issue. Um, if it comes down to a conscience vote, then, yep. then only that, what, 120 people get an opportunity yep. to express their wishes. Um, we know that you would probably vote in favour. Most probably, we know yeah. that Bill English would definitely vote against. Correct. At the end of the day, it's not that isn't really democracy, is it? I mean, this is a significant issue which really needs to go through the select committee process. <coughs> well, it's probably representative of where New Zealand's at, in which case there'll be a wide range of views. Mm -hmm. It will depend enormously. If, if legislation was drafted, let's say, because various members are going to put in a bill, whatever happens, they're going to put in a bill. And whether they, that bill gets drawn out of the member's ballot, it depends on the fortune of you know those drawing them out. But, but the, the, the point there is, at least you would be debating something which would say, OK, this is, this how is we legislation, this is how right, we would do it. Right. Because an inquiry can be an inquiry, but in the end, some people, for instance, I, I would vote for, in my opinion, assisted uh, euthanasia in the way that Lucretia Seals was describing it, mm -hmm. which was in the very final bits of her life with her loved one making that call, uh, even though she didn't specify actually under what basis he would make that call. Um, for instance, there was a bill drafted some time ago that Labor had in the ballot that I wouldn't have voted for. It was, this is Marion Street's bill. Well, it was much broader from what I could see yeah. reading it. Yeah, and that is the issue, isn't it? It's how, do you, it's how do you allow it in the cases where it should be allowed, but protect people yeah. from coercion and things like that? Yeah, it's a very delicate issue. I tell you what, in, the, in terms of nurses and doctors, a lot of doctors, certainly in the palliative of care area feel very strongly opposed to this. Mm -hmm. so, and the reason is they take an oath to keep people alive. And so essentially... It runs contrary to that. Yeah, there's quite a bit of difference between assisting someone with all the pain relief in the world, but them actually naturally passing away. In other words, not keeping them alive, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis actually assisting them. And you could see it actually with Lucretia Seals. I saw her on, the, on one of the television documentaries saying that she would know when her husband Matt knew it was the right time. But she herself didn't define it. And that's the problem politicians have. You know, we, a lot, we have a lot of you great ideas, be, but how do we write that down? To, to law write law, you have to be able to define things. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Jerry Brownlee and his surprise trip to Iraq. Are those things desperately hard to keep secret? Um, yeah, it can be a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go sometime this year, and it's not necessarily straightforward. I mean, I'd like to take the media with me, um, but the question is whether I'll be allowed to, able to. I mean, I, I think I should be able to, but All right, it's so a challenge. Then, so then it's very, very hard to keep it secret, isn't it? But still, you it would need to be secret. You'd need to keep it as quiet as possible. Yeah, and generally the media is pretty good at keeping a bond of secrecy. I mean, I went off to um, Bamiyan and to Kabul when we were in mm. Afghanistan, and um, the media came with me for the most part. It was very difficult to get them all in. It caused lots of problems. Uh, but yeah, in principle, but I think it's, it's still quite, quite a valuable thing. And I think particularly because of the 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 debate surrounding this deployment, it would be a very good idea to take to take a handful of media there. Yeah, well, um, I think it's I'll, also I'll make some suggestions as to who actually. Who I could take, like. but, yeah, absolutely. But the I mean, the idea with him going, I mean, a, a we should definitely be going. But secondly, you do get a much greater insight. I so have you talked? Have you had a, a debriefing yeah. with him since he's been back? Yeah. Are you entirely happy with the way things are going for our troops over there? Yeah, I mean, actually, quite satisfied that they are getting the protection in a secure environment in a compound within a compound, quite a long way. Away 
away from things and actually um, training people who want to be trained. And I think overall, um, our guys there are much more knowledgeable, I think, about you know the overall situation than some people might give them credit for. In fact, actually pretty up to date with what the New Zealand media are reporting, both on the Iraqi side mm. and actually on the New Zealand side. So for instance, Jerry said to me that the New Zealand forces took a lot of heart from the fact that the um, Herald poll was overwhelmingly in favour of them being there. In other words, they liked the fact that the New Zealand public support them. Yeah, yeah. and even although Ron Mark seems to be, to, to not to put too fine a point on it, pissed off that Jerry went, yeah. I mean, it seems to me entirely appropriate that he does go. In fact, he needs to go. Yeah, well, why would he be? I mean, if we're, if we're not prepared to go to a place that, that we're forcing uh, people to go because they represent New Zealand, then where's that yeah. Liverpool? Um, with the intelligence that you're getting there, I mean, we've talked mm. a lot about Ramadi and the, the fact that, you know, it, we are expecting to recapture it. Yeah. Do you know how things are looking there? I mean, is that yeah. imminent? Yeah, so I um, mean, it's a complicated situation. But um, if you look at Ramadi, um, what's there's two options available to Al Badi, the the prime minister. Uh, one is using solely Iraqi forces, and the second is using um, Shia militia. The militia are very well trained, and um, but not necessarily s- sort of under his control, but not completely. Right. He has decided to use the militia, so that's quite a big step. Obviously backed up by the Iraqi forces. So on the back of all of that, the the probability of them retaking Ramadi would be quite high, I would have thought. And in the short term rather than long term. I would have thought so. Well, that's what right. he's been saying publicly, but let's see. Just very quickly, Maggie Barry um, really stepped on your toes, didn't she, during the well, week? Moonbeam's when Moonbeam's paws really. She, more, well, too. yes. Oh, God, we have to talk about that name. Um, uh, Moonbeam. She suggested, Moonbeam's much loved, actually. Well, it's not just Moonbeam, it's is it? It's male. Moonbeam, smoky, <laughs> fluffy, key. Key, yep, for all good reasons. Is that an entirely appropriate name Moonbeam for a Prime Minister's like, cat? Yeah, OK, well, it was because the kids were 10 and 8 or something. Steffi got to call them Moonbeam. Are you blaming your children for this? Well, it's true. Steffi got to call them Moonbeam. Max got to call them Smokey. Brony got to call them Fluffy. And I wasn't allowed to name. So there you go. So do you literally walk around your house shouting out Moonbeam, Smokey, Fluffy, Key? What do you think? I think you might, actually, John. Well, I just sort of think you might. Our relationship has reached a whole new low. No, no, it's Mooney, which is interesting when you oh, stand Mooney's outside right, screaming actually. Mooney. Yeah, yeah. No, Mooney's all right. All right, John, thank you very much for joining us. No chance of catching you... a bird flightless or otherwise, just for the record. I don't want to I don't, I don't want to offend Mooney, but she has got She's more chance of becoming it. the next Prime Minister of New Zealand than of becoming a bird catcher. Yeah, because that, that, that is what Maggie mm. Barry is concerned about. She doesn't need about. a bell. She just about. needs to know what a bird would look like. I mean, she, the fire inside, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's because you feed her too well. You know, mm. she's lucky to be in a multi-millionaire's house. She doesn't have to go out mm. and forage on native wildlife. Yeah, well, um, true. true. <laughs> but there's not a lot of, to be honest, not a lot of kiwis walking around our property. True, true, true. All right, thank you very much for that, John. Have a have a great week.